everyone, I'm Alexandra. I'm a software engineer at Fellow, where we're building a product that acts as a manager's co-pilot, so helps you with your one-on-ones and team meetings and feedback. If that sounds like something that would be useful to you, check out fellow.app or come talk to me afterwards. But I want to talk to you about today is something completely different, which I've been working on in my spare time. And it's this app that I built that lets you access the internet without actually having a data or Wi-Fi connection. And it transfers all of the data that you need over SMS. So why would I build something like this when we already have data and Wi-Fi connections all over the world? So I come from a country where a data plan for two gigabytes a month costs me 55 euros, and it only works in my hometown. And the internet prices are so extremely expensive in this country that three quarters of a million people are still using dial-up internet in their homes. I come from Canada. <laughs> So the internet is so, so expensive just when I'm at home that when I'm traveling somewhere, like to come to Berlin, the prices are just totally out of my price range. I, I really, really like to travel, so this data problem is kind of an issue for me. When I travel, I love to visit Paris, and the streets look kind of like this. So I get lost really easily in a grid-like structure, so when I'm over here, I need data so I can figure out how to get around. And I could technically download a map offline and use that, but that doesn't give me transit directions, which is something I really need when I walk an hour in the wrong direction, I need the subway to get back home. So when I was trying to come up with a solution for this problem, I noticed like I can't afford the data plans, but SMS without a data plan costs about 15 cents per message, so I tried to work around that. When I was starting a solution to this problem, uh, chatbots were the big thing at the time. So the first way I approached this problem is I set up a Python server that I could send an SMS to. The server would have unlimited access to the internet. It would grab all the data that I needed for the directions, and then it would text it back to me. So I could do something really simple, like say, how do I get from point A to B? And I would get the Google Maps API directions back in one SMS. And so I could do this for just about 30 cents per direction, which is pretty good compared to what I would have been hit paying for data otherwise. And like this really worked, and I used it a lot when I was traveling, but the issue is when you get a little bit of access to the internet, you start to crave it quite a bit more. So I was building all these one-off integrations to like figure out uh, ratings for a restaurant I wanted to go see or translate a word I didn't know and do all this stuff. And building out all these integrations as a one-off took up a lot of time. And so I thought, there must be a better way. I'll just build a browser. And that's what I'm going to show you today. So there are two main components to the project that I did. There is the Android app on one side and the server in Node.js on the other. So the, the app I made in Android because I, it was just for me. I don't have an iPhone, so I didn't care about iOS. And I'm using Java instead of Kotlin because Java had a lot more on Stack Overflow about SMS. And so that was a good solution for me because I'm not an app developer. The server I did in Node.js because I thought it would be really, really funny to use JavaScript on the server where it does not belong to make this JavaScript-less browser where it's supposed to be. And then in the middle, I used Twilio to facilitate the communication. So Twilio is a service that it does a lot of things, but what I used it for is uh, I bought a phone number from it, and it let me set up an endpoint to forward all my SMS to. So I can send a text message to my Twilio phone number, and it'll forward all those messages to my server. So before I jump into the project, just to set up like a limitation that I had to deal with, SMS can only handle 160 characters at a time. So if I want to create a browser, I'm going to have to transmit this data less than one tweet at a time. Uh, so for a bit more context on the issue, like this Google web page looks very, very small. It's just a text box and the logo and a button. But the thing is, if you actually look at the page source, not including any CSS, not including any of the images or any sources that are being loaded in, this web page is a quarter of a million characters long. So if we were to transmit this entire thing, it would take 1,300 SMS, not including the ones that are going to be dropped along the way. So in Twilio fees alone, I would have been paying $10 just to transmit this Google page, and that's not going to get me very far and kind of defeats the whole purpose of being a cheap solution. So we're going to have to do a lot on this page to get it to work. 
But if we were to imagine what this Google page looked like if we were building it up from scratch, we wouldn't imagine like all the CSS to make everything line up properly or all the external sources being loaded in. We would just imagine this little bit of HTML that sets up the form in the text box, which is really all we need. And this only takes one SMS. So this is how we're going to have to envision a lot of the web pages to make this project actually work. So we're going to walk through the life cycle of a request, and that's starting on the Android side in the app. So right off the bat, we get into this huge limitation with SMS because the URL spec says that a URL can be 2,000 characters long. So that could take up 13 SMS, which is already a lot more than we want to have to deal with. So the first thing we're going to do on the app side, and the app just looks like this, where there's a text box and a Go button, very, very simple browser. So we're going to start off by chopping off everything on the URL that we don't really need. So the browser is going to be a very text-based uh, browser, so we're not going to allow any kind of cool single-page applications. So we can chop off anything that has like the pound symbol, page, whatever. We don't want any tracking IDs. We don't want any query parameters. So everything in black after the URL there, we can get rid of. And same with the HTTPS, www, at the start of the URL, because it's kind of assumed that all websites have that anyway. So the part in yellow is what we're going to be sending over uh, as an SMS. And that's going to look something like this. So I'm not going to cover the Android side of things too, too much. But essentially, what happens is we check to make sure we have send, receive, and write permissions on Android. And then we use their very simple SMS manager API, which lets you just specify the destination phone number, which in this case is our Twilio one, specify the text that you want to send, and then it just gets sent off. So then Twilio picks up on this message, and it converts it into a format that the server can actually read. So it comes with a whole bunch of metadata uh, shown here. We're only going to really care about the body, uh, who it's to, and who it's from, so that we know who to send this message back to. So this message got sent over to the server, which we're going to look at next. So a lot of us are probably working in React or some kind of like componentizing library or framework uh, all day. So we kind of forget how big our HTML ends up really being, because we're only dealing with these little tiny components at once. But if you're like me and you press view page source accidentally instead of inspect element all the time, you'll end up with this massive, massive wall of text wondering like, how on earth our web pages ended up being this big. And this is, the, like, this is what the Google source page looks like. like this is what we're going to have to deal with. And this is what we're going to have to parse before sending it back over to our texts. But there are a lot of things that we can remove from this off the bat. Like, we don't care about comments. We don't care about header data. We don't care about CSS or any of that stuff. So there's a lot of stuff we can get off, uh, take off pretty easily to get this to work. On the server side, uh, what we're going to do is start by grabbing the URL that Twilio has sent us, making a request to that URL by prepending the HTTPS to it. And then we're going to use a library called Cheerio, which is jQuery for the server side, pretty much. And we're just going to use that to get the body off of the HTML, because uh, jQuery makes that quite easy. And then once we have this body, we're going to start to remove a bunch of the HTML. And for that, I used a library called Sanitize HTML. So line four that I highlighted lets you specify specific tags in the HTML that you want to allow. So here, we're, we're only going to allow anchor tags, inputs, and forms, because in my opinion, those are the only elements that, in a text-based browser, really provide any kind of value to the user. Uh, lines 7 to 10 that are highlighted shows the specific attributes on those tags that we are going to allow. So we're not going to allow class name because we don't have CSS anyway. We're not going to allow image tags because we can't really load images over SMS. And so we're only going to start loading these things. Uh, the last bit that's highlighted in the exclusive filter, uh, so sanitize HTML lets us specify a function of the tags and attributes to decide whether we want to show certain things. So uh, one of the examples I have there is we're going to get rid of all of the hidden inputs, because the user can't see those anyway, so it's not going to provide any value. And we're going to get rid of policy URLs and terms and conditions, because no one's going to click on those anyway, so it's kind of wasted space. So now we have essentially a whole bunch of text and a couple of tags left in the HTML. So we're going to start to compress this text. And we, we could use something like gzip, but 
that's not fun, so we're going to forget about <laughs> any kind of real confession like that. So in the English language, there are a lot of words that we use super often, like the and and, and there are a lot of single letter words, or single letters that just aren't words, like every letter except for I and A. So one of the ways of compressing the text that I've done is every very, very common English word can be mapped directly to a single letter that isn't a word on its own. So everything that's the becomes T, everything that's and becomes ampersand or whatever letter, and on the Android side, when we're doing the decompression, we know that if that letter is there on its own, it means the because it's not a word otherwise. And to do that, it's very, very simple. We just have to set up a dictionary mapping these words to their shorter versions and then go through the text and do a replace all. Another way of compressing the text is through thesaurus APIs. So if we're visiting a website like Wikipedia, there are going to be a lot of big words there that don't need to be that big. So what we can do is find those very large words, use a thesaurus API, and see if there's a matching synonym that's much shorter. So penitentiary is a 12-letter word, I think, 12 or 14 letters, and jail is a four-letter word. And in most contexts, they're going to mean the same thing. You don't really care which one's being used. So we're going to do this replacement. And this is a 66% compression, which is quite a good compression rate. <laughs> the last way we're going to start compressing our, um, the text in our uh, HTML is by replacing links. So when you're using a, a website on your phone, you don't care what a link actually is. You just care that it takes you to where it's supposed to take you. But links can be really, really long, like up to 2,000 characters. So instead of sending over these links that no one is actually going to be reading, we're going to replace them with really short, random strings. So when a user clicks on a link on the app side, that short link is what's going to be sent back to the server. The server is going to know that short link means this long link, and it's going to fetch the correct data to send back to us. And that's going to look like this. So I'm using Redis to store these, mat these pairings of short URLs to long URLs because we don't need anything super persistent because most links are, gonna be, are not going to be clicked on anyway, and the web page is probably going to be gone in five minutes. So what we're doing here is there's a function that takes the phone number from the user and the actual URL that is on the web page, and it's going to store it in Redis where the key is the phone number and the short URL, so it's really easy to retrieve when it's sent back. And then the value of that is the full URL. Now, the last bit of compression we're going to do is on the HTML itself. So we've compressed all the English text. We've compressed all the like, tags and attributes. But we still are going to have a lot of large tags like this. And things like input or type and name and value and all those tags that we do allow are going to show up pretty often. So we're gonna, we can remove those and replace them. A nice thing about the SMS character set is that it supports all of the English tag or all of the English or letters and numbers and things that you see on an English keyboard, plus the whole Greek alphabet. So what we've done here, since all the individual letters are already used by our English compression, the text compression, we're going to start mapping specific HTML tags and combinations of symbols to these Greek letters. So I tried to map it by color here. The open bracket input matches the first character. Type equals open quotation mark is the second character. and so on. So this brings it down, this brings something like this down from 44 characters to 12 characters, which is going to provide a significant compression. So now the HTML is ready to be sent out. But an annoying thing about SMS is that there's no guarantee of delivery, and there's no guarantee that it's going to be delivered in the right order either. So we might end up with a situation where we've sent out six SMS, but only four of them get there, and they're all out of order. So we're not going to really care about the part where the SMS are dropped in this project, because it's just a small project for me to access the internet for fun. And if we did worry about that, we would have to build out an entire packet delivery network where we have to figure out which messages were dropped, how do we recover from that, and that's just a little bit more effort. But uh, we are going to worry about this out of order problem, and to solve that, the HTML that we have is going to be divided up into the 160 character limits, and we're going to prepend some metadata to the start of each message that shows 
the total number of messages in this web page, and then the index where that SMS falls, so that when we put the HTML back together, it's in the correct order. And to send out those messages, we're just going to use Twilio's library. Very simple. Just say, Twilio, send message. And it goes off, and that's all we have to do. So now these messages are sent, and we're ready to start getting them again on the Android side. So Android has a thing called a broadcast uh, receiver, which is something that listens out for certain signals that are sent within your phone. So here we, we've set up a broadcast receiver that listens out for messages coming in specifically from the number that we own on Twilio. So uh, what this is doing is it's just listening for that message to come in, and then it's grabbing the text from that message and sending it over to an activity, which is Android's way of saying a new view. And in that new view, the first thing we're going to have to do is reverse that Greek letter conversion that we did so we get the proper HTML back. Uh, we're going to reverse the shortened English words. We're going to add some spaces between closing and opening tags just so that there's a little bit of format within our page because there's no CSS otherwise to make it look good. So we're going to try to break it up a little bit. And then we're going to load the HTML. So Android has my favorite feature ever, which is uh, called a web view. And a web view is something that lets you have a, like a little version of Chrome within your app. And this was the most exciting feature for me, because going into this project, I didn't know that you could pass a web view an actual HTML string. I thought you could only pass it a URL to load. And so I thought that I was going to have to build my own actual browser and rendering engine, and that didn't sound like tons of fun. So, this takes care of everything. Chrome is just going to render everything uh, properly for us. And this is what it ends up looking like. So if we load, load google.ca, on the left we have what this actually looks like in the app, which is basically what Google looked like 15 years ago. <laughs> on the right side is the SMS that you can actually see coming in in your default uh, messaging app on your phone. So this entire web page took just three SMS to transmit instead of the 1,300 that it would have otherwise. And the code that we wrote isn't specific to Google. It's applicable to any, any text-based website. So if we, we could just hard code this website instead, like on the, one of the first few slides where it's just one SMS to transmit, and that would have taken like even, even less data to send over. So I have dial-up in the name of the talk, and I was really curious, how does this actually uh, compare to dial-up internet? On my phone, loading Google takes about two seconds using like, regular data or Wi-Fi. On dial-up a couple of years ago, it would have taken about a minute to do. And using the app that I built, it takes about 10 seconds when my phone's actually working. So if you're somewhere where you don't have any other access to the internet, like me when I was traveling to Europe, 10 seconds is not that bad to wait for a website to load. So SMS is not secure at all. It is subject to be uh, intercepted. It is not secure. So one of the ways I've prevented people from misusing this is by removing any kind of sign-in links from, uh, from the HTML and doing that. But otherwise, like, this is not something that should be used to log into anything. On the right side, though, because this is a custom browser, there's no tracking or anything. So it's technically more private than your general, uh, general browser. Something that would have made this project quite a bit easier is using MMS instead of SMS. So I could have transmitted the entire website just by compressing it a little bit and sending it over for very, very little, uh, for not that much more expensive. Uh, but that's not fun. So <laughs> didn't do it that way. There are a lot of things that I want to do with this project. So phones are by nature uh, bi-directional in communication. So we could do something really easily with WebSockets, because the server can just ping the phone whenever it wants. Uh, we could do AJAX. So for websites we visit a lot, uh, like Twitter or something, the format of every tweet is exactly the same. So we could store the HTML and CSS to recreate the proper Twitter on our phone, and then just use the SMS to get the actual text content. Uh, we could support JavaScript. Might be a little difficult because we're removing so much HTML, but it would be a really fun problem to figure out how to map JavaScript to the HTML and how to properly compress both. And then my favorite, which is what I'm working on now, is true dial-up for this project. So we're not doing real dial-up because it's over SMS, but we could use a phone call 
to quickly transmit data like dial-up used to work. And I think that would be quite a bit cheaper. Uh, it would take a lot. It would be much faster, and it would be real dial-up in that case because you couldn't use your phone while the web website was loading. <laughs> so uh, there are probably a lot of you thinking, this is ridiculous. There are some cards for this purpose. I didn't know about this till a couple months ago. <laughs> so if you're traveling to Europe, you can get a SIM card like for 20 gigs for very, very cheap. And 20 gigs compared to my two gigs at home is essentially unlimited data. So this is what I get when I travel now. <laughs> and it's, it's a much better solution. But when I'm in Europe, I usually come for like the two weeks you're allowed with a SIM card plus a day. So my project still comes in handy for that one extra day. <laughs> And uh, so my talk, or my, the code is available on my GitHub. There's a link to that from my website. And uh, yeah, that's my talk. Thank you.